the initiative called Sustainable Energy for All that has been launched by His Excellency Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General, concerns eradicating energy poverty around the world. This initiative has defined very clearly three very achieve, ambitious but achievable targets. The first is to promote universal access to energy by 2030. Second, to double the rate of improvement of energy efficiency. And third, to double the share of renewable energy in global energy mix. You might ask, why is this important? We know today that 1.4 billion people have no access to electricity. 2.7 billion people rely on biomass for their primary energy source. We also see that the biggest contributor to climate change and global warming are activities related to energy systems, power generation, heating of buildings, transportation, and of course industrial uses. It means that if we can provide access to, the, of, to energy for those who do not have, they will not cut down the forests in order to get basic cooking materials to prepare their meals or warm their homes. It also means that if we improve energy efficiency, we do not have to build as many power stations as we do around the world, which will, which will significantly reduce emissions. But if we also have better building codes, better buildings, more efficient transportation, it means that again, if, uh, if, um, global warming uh, uh, will be reduced significantly and carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions in total will be reduced significantly. Finally, why renewables? We believe renewables create a new opportunity for us to change the global energy mix. The more renewables we have, the more green energy we have, the less the emissions. More importantly, in the context of poor countries, we know that where the greed cannot be extended, for example, as it is the case with my village called Kichom in Sierra Leone, if we have renewable energy technologies, biogas facilities, solar uh, uh, panels, solar lighting possibilities, these people's lives will be improved automatically. With renewable energy for community mini grids, they can have access to clean water, water can be pumped to their homes, with clean cooking facilities and specialized cook stoves, they reduce the indoor air pollution which claims the lives of almost two million people around the world every year. That is more deaths from indoor air pollution related to biomass use that is much more than the mortality rate for, caused by malaria or for that matter HIV AIDS. It is in this context that the Secretary General's initiative called Sustainable Energy for All will, create an, uh, will be launching an action agenda at the Rio Plus 20 summit this agenda will lay out very clearly what global leaders can do to promote the three targets we mentioned earlier. It will indicate not only what governments can do, but what the private sector can do to in fact incentivize the, the, the deployment of new clean energy technologies all around the world. Sustainable energy for all is not only about poor countries, it's also about rich countries using energy differently reducing energy wastage, introducing new innovative transformative uh, technologies to reduce the carbon content of products that we use today, but also in particular to move towards a better green growth trajectory that will create jobs and create wealth around the world. Energy security, sustainable energy for all, wealth creation, food security, water security are all interlinked we have to address it and that's why under the leadership of the Secretary General this initiative we believe will succeed. We have done a number of studies by various UN agencies and think tanks that without access to energy poor countries cannot achieve the Millennium Development Goals. We know there is a direct link to lack of energy and lack of access to clean water because water cannot be pumped into homes. We know that without a reliable, affordable source of energy, a number of communities cannot create wealth within those communities. We also know that in fact, MDG3 related to gender and women, that the people who suffer the most out of energy poverty are the women. They are the people who collect the firewood 
There are the people who have to cook on open fireplaces and inhale most of the smoke along with their children. We know, for example, that if we have access to energy, efficient, affordable, basic energy services in homes, we can save women and girls 20 hours of work uh, per week that they can deploy in other productive activities. So MDGs cannot be achieved. Better education, food security, uh, uh, better health conditions can be enhanced if there is access to reliable, affordable energy services.